So let's look at the energy involved when we have phase changes. Okay, um, This is kind of an overview of what a graph would look like if as I increase the temp, uh, sorry, as I add heat and the temperature increases, this section right here represents where I would have a solid. This is where the solid is turning into a liquid. This is a liquid. Liquid is turning into a vapor, and this is vapor. Note that these areas where the phase change is occurring are plateaus. The temperature doesn't change while the the state is changing. All the energy you put in goes towards changing the state, separating the particles, not increasing the temperature. So if we look at um, another same sort of thing here, I've got this solid. Okay, If I'm going this way, my solid is turning into a liquid and I'm melting. If I'm coming downwards and it's freezing, I've got my liquid. I'm vaporizing or condensing, depending on which way I'm going, and this is a gas. Okay, in order to do these things, we have values. Okay, all of these areas right here where there's a change in temperature, we can find the heat for that by just saying Q is MC delta T. Okay, but these areas where there's a plateau, there's obviously no change in temperature, so that's not going to work. Instead, we have for this the heat of fusion, and for this area, we have the heat of vaporization. Now these are obviously different for different substances, okay? But the heat of fusion for water is 6.00 kilojoules per mole. So basically that means it takes 6 kilojoules to melt 1 mole of ice. Okay? The heat of vaporization is 40.7 kilojoules per mole. That means it takes about 40.7 kilojoules to turn one mole of water into steam. Okay, and an added bonus, just to annoy you, is all of these areas right here have different specific heats. Okay, for this one, the specific heat of ice is 2.1 joules per gram degree Celsius. For water, it's we've seen before 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius, and for steam, it's 1.7 joules per gram degree Celsius. Now, you don't have to memorize these values. They'll be in a table, but you need to use them properly in an example like the next one. So I want to determine the heat needed to convert 10 grams of ice at negative 12 degrees Celsius to steam at 245. I'm going to take the time to draw a little graph here, so that, that picture because I want to figure out on this graph where am I starting and where am I ending up so that I know how many steps I have to do. So I'm starting here somewhere and I'm going up to here somewhere. So I have one, okay, two, three, four, five different steps. Okay, the pink ones are all Changes in temperature, so Q equals MC delta T. The white ones are plateaus, so we need to use the heat of fusion and then the heat of vaporization. So let's actually do this out and see what it looks like. Okay, so for this first step, Q is MC delta T. Okay, so I know the mass of the ice is 10. The specific heat capacity of ice is 2.1, and the change in temperature is 12 degrees. So that gives me 252 joules, or 0.252 kilojoules. For the second step, right in here, we need to use the heat of fusion, because we're turning ice into water. So we say I have 6 kilojoules per mole. So all I really need to do is just multiply by the number of moles. I'll let you do the work, but um, if you change 10 grams... Um, of water, H2O, to moles, you get 0.555 moles. Okay, right, just dividing it by 18.02. So we just multiply this by 0.555 moles, and we get that this is 3.33 kilojoules to do that step. Okay, now we're here at this third one. So again, we're at Q is MC delta T. Okay, now we're in water, 
still weighs 10. Specific heat of water is 4.184. And the change in temperature is from the, right there, the melting point to the boiling point. So there's 100 degrees there. We're changing it all the way from 100 degrees. Um, so this gives us 4184 joules or 4.184 kilojoules. I'm changing them to kilojoules so that they'll all be in the same units because we're going to add them together. Okay, this next plateau, that's your heat of vaporization. Okay, and that's 40.7 kilojoules per mole. Again, we'll multiply it by the number of moles, 0.555. Okay, and that's going to give us 22.6 kilojoules. Okay, so we got another value there. And then the last one, we're heating it up from 100 to, to 245. So Q is MC delta T. So you got 10 grams. Now the specific heat of steam is 1.7 and 145 degrees. And this is 2465 joules or 2.465 kilojoules. You note that we needed to do each of these steps separately. I couldn't just say I was going from minus 12 to 245 because all of the specific heat capacities are different. So it didn't work. You have to actually do out every single step. Now these aren't very hard. They just, they're just they tedious. They take a while. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take those five values and we're going to add them up. And that will give us the total energy for this, this process. And this is the longest one you could have. This is a five-step one. We could start at different places and have fewer steps. Um, so if you add all that up, you get 32.8 kilojoules. And that's how you do the heat involved in changes of state.